money. Work and then you gotta you gotta be breaking stuff at some point. That's what I wanted to get at next. Yeah. Is see the thing is, not the thing is not only are you gonna build out this expensive competitive off-road vehicle, but you're gonna be constantly breaking stuff. And, I find that difficult trails, difficult four-wheel drive trails, will break vehicles. CB axles will, CBs will snap, tie rods, bend, drive shafts get tacoed. My needs have been kind of changing. And now I wanna also talk about, you know, why I chose this thing. Would I still choose it today? Uh, so let me get right into it, my, my honest opinion. So I was gonna make my one of my typical videos where I get on a computer and edit, but I forgot the plug to my laptop, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> the video was gonna be titled Preparing for the PMW, so because I'm gonna be driving into Oregon for my very first time. Anyways, I'm here with my buddy Jay and his family, Angie and their kids over there. But uh, yeah, to, I'm gonna go talk about why I chose this. This is my third video about why I chose the Honda Passport as my adventure vehicle. Just All right, so this video will be a little bit of a podcast. If you don't want to look at this, I did my hair for you guys. Um, if you don't want to look at this, then just turn the screen off and you can just listen. Right off the bat, this is an on-road oriented vehicle that I have modified to go a little further outdoors. And I know it is, it's not a quote unquote true off-roader. And according to Honda, what they wanted to make was something that was the one of the better compromises between on-road and off-road to to some degree i uh i think honda is correct it's a good compromise between on-road and off-road so something to you know not exactly take you through a bouldery rock garden but uh you know something to a vehicle to kind of get you to uh you know, certain campgrounds and uh, basically moderate terrain, easy to moderate terrain, I'd say, because obviously this thing is modified. It has a three and a half inch lift. It's on 33 inch tires, um, but stock, it comes with 30 inch tires and it has 8.1 inches of ground clearance. This thing now has like 12 and a half inches of ground clearance. And, um, and that's gonna get it further. I mean, to be quite honest, there were a few people that were um, commenting on the video where this thing got stuck in some mud. You know, it was an opportunity um, for, you know, some people to like, yes, it finally got stuck. I'm not sure where some of those comments came from. Any vehicle. Could get stuck in loose terrain seriously uh we just had a we were just on a trip in colorado and my buddy camping randy got stuck in his honda ridgeline that just has a six speed so um you know a lot of people would expect that rig to get stuck but just moments later a jeep on 37 it was a jeep wrangler rubicon that was built had full under, underbody armor, it got stuck in that same spot. You know, there are gonna be some people that have lots of experience, and there are gonna be some people that don't have much experience. The people that do have a lot of experience will know that anything could get stuck. I think the people that are gonna be in denial that um, you know their, their rig can't get stuck are, are people that just don't have that much experience or they think they know what they're talking about they think they have experience um yeah sure like a vehicle like this lexus gx is going to be more capable 
than this Honda Passport, more off-road capable. But, you know, that's kind of not the point. Um, there's certain terrain where vehicles will just get stuck. I just wanted to kind of touch on that. And, and now I want to also talk about, you know, why I chose this thing. Would I still choose it today? Uh, so let me get right into it, my, my honest opinion. My, my needs have been kind of changing. And uh, I mean, to be honest, to ask right now, to ask July 7th, 2023, what vehicle would I be open to purchasing? Uh, there's not that many of them. Um, I think this rig right here, Lexus GX, would be one of the rigs that, one of the very, very few rigs that I would, I would consider choosing. Um, and then now they have that, that new Lexus uh, GX 550, uh, but you know, we just, we just don't know too much about that. Uh, a lot of, I, I'm not a fan of turbos. I've owned, I've owned three turbocharged vehicles before this thing. And I do not want to go back. <laughs> I'm not saying I won't go back, but I, I don't want to go back. It's, it, it's always been pay to play. And, uh, there's going to be a lot more to worry about with a turbo vehicle. Um, so this would be a vehicle to consider. This is the Land Cruiser Prado. Um, it's a proven platform. And this specific model has a six-speed transmission as opposed to the five-speed transmission. So I, I'll let you... Just to let you know, I, I would not choose a Lexus GX 470. Um, it's a view, you know, this platform is, I, I, I recommend it to a lot of friends, but I personally would not choose the 470 just because it's antiquated, has a five speed transmission. Yes, it's proven. And if you're okay with that, more power to you. But I think this is a good rig because it has the six speed, um, it's just a bit more fuel efficient than the than the 470. Um, also, there's more robust parts, so this has a more robust rear differential. The 470 has that double pinion 8 inch rear diff, whereas this has an 8.2 inch rear diff, but it's quadruple pinion and just more more reliable, more robust. Um, I think the only other vehicle that I would consider choosing right now too. And this is just going off of a hunch. I, I think it would be a good platform is the Nissan Frontier. Just because I do, I would like to kind of transition over to a, uh, you know, a nice truck bed. Um, I think having that kind of set up is just more versatile uh, for camping. Although I, I do have to say the new Centauri rooftop tent has been pretty freaking awesome. Um, one thing I would miss if I went with these two vehicles. Hey, Jay, what's your uh, zero to 60 in that, in this GX? Not great. <laughs> yeah, so that's one thing that I would really miss if I did move to those vehicles. Oh, dear. I got some mosquito bite right here. If I moved to something else that's more off-road capable, I would be missing out on the on-road performance. So this thing... This, I have a 2019 Honda Passport. Car and driver says it does 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Um, and the Motor Trend, they're more Chevy and Dodge biased. <laughs> and of course, uh, you know, this thing can't possibly be quicker than a than its competitors on, on, on that side. So uh, Motor Trend says that it does 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Um, still pretty... Yeah, it's still pretty uh, respectable. Yeah, so TFL did a, um, I think they did like this comparison with like the Frontier, the Honda Ridgeline, um, and some other of the midsize trucks. And the Ridgeline just blew away the competition as far as acceleration. The performance would definitely be missed and, and on-road performance is really important to me because I daily drive this thing. 
Um, it's just part of my, you know, my, my spontaneous personality is I just want to pick up and go. And I, I don't, you know, I don't have time to choose rigs. I know people are like, well, just, you know, have a, have an overland rig and then have a, have your daily driver. I'm like, no, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to choose between two different vehicles and, and cause at any moment I could just be on an adventure. So, uh, it's not an option for me. I need something that is going to be my daily driver. At least at this point in my life, I want something that uh, does both daily driving and adventures well or or good enough. Okay, so so if you've been following me for a little bit, then you'll know that I used to drive a Subaru, and I first had a WRX and. I love that thing. That was probably my, with the exception of having to drive stick shift in traffic, that was my favorite daily driver for sure. And then uh, the, the wife and I wanted something bigger, so we went and got a Subaru Forester XT, a 2015 Subaru Forester XT. Uh, had the CVT transmission, and um, you know, that specific vehicle um, got a lot of memories in that thing. And, uh, you know, we ran into some reliability and capability issues. And so the idea was to trade it in for a Toyota Tacoma. And, uh, <laughs> morning. morning. Catching the, the bed head. <laughs> yeah, but what was I talking about? Um, the, the Subaru Forester XT. Um, the idea was to trade it in for a Tacoma, but I couldn't, couldn't fit in it six foot, like let's say 270. It was not a comfortable fit. And I was kind of, you know, thinking about the future and you know, possibly you know, having kids. And, uh, that would not be a, that would not be a vehicle to put a car seat in. <laughs> so, uh, why didn't I get a forerunner? Cause I already drove a 2008 F3 cruiser. I didn't want, uh, you know, didn't want to go back to that. Uh, I got out of the FJ cruiser because I just didn't like the on-road handling. Um, that was all, yeah. So the Honda dealership was next door and I uh, had a pretty good idea of how I wanted to build this thing. All right, so the next thing to talk about and I'll probably get here, Jay to kind of help me out on this one is, it, it kind of depends on what you expect out of a vehicle, right? So um, you've, your, your rig's pretty pretty darn built. Like, I think if you wanted to, you actually could go rock crawling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll need a slider. I'll have to cut the bumpers or get a different bumper on them. Yeah, but you're you're so close to being to that point. It, 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 it could, yeah, it's, right. it's possible. Would you want to take a, Lex, a stock Lexus GX 460 rock crawling right off the bat? No, 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 no not at but all. But with yeah. some, you got another mosquito right here. <laughs> oh. uh, I just flew away just in time. Now it's like hovering <laughs> over your head. Right here. Yeah. Oh. I think I got him. <laughs> you know, some of those comments about people commenting about vehicle capability, um, a lot of them might be commenting from the perspective of competitive off-roading. Yeah. That's just not, that's not what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> that's not what you're trying to do here. If you want to competitively off-road people, don't carry an ARB refrigerator. <laughs> it's gonna weigh you down. Payload Seriously, if you want to do better off-road, don't carry a bunch of stuff. <laughs> don't, don't take kids with you. Yeah. you and don't take a don't put a 180-pound rooftop tent on your rig. <laughs> what are you about? Angie, what's your take on it? <laughs> well, as far as I don't know what you want out of a vehicle, or what you want your vehicle to do. You drive one of the most legendary adventure vehicles <laughs> that was ever on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just want something to take me where I need to go, whether it's, you know, going to get groceries or, you know, coming out here. As long as they'll take me there and take me back with no problem breaking down, like, I'm good. That's, 
Also, this is our yeah. daily driver, so it's, we drive this every day. Yeah, I drive mine every day. Yeah. That's important. It's important. What I wanted to do is overlanding, and overlanding is adventure travel, not not wheel. Your primary goal isn't to go wheeling. It's not to conquer obstacles. It's to explore, right? Explore adventure, go to beautiful places like this. Yeah. Go camping and, um, you know, point to point kind of camping. That's the whole purpose of, uh, of an overland rig. Um, and then if you wanted to do the like competitive, ro <laughs> competitive wheeling, then you, you know, you have your Jeeps, your built Jeeps or your highly modified Toyotas, yeah. or you could just be a crazy person and take, you know, Take this Lexus GX on a crazy trail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of work and money to get build a like actual rock crawling vehicle. Yeah, and so, I mean, you you put a lot of money into this thing. You have king suspension. <laughs> I mean, it's shocks and you know springs. <laughs> that's that's just the normal stuff. But you know, even so, you know, you would need like a like a long long travel maybe you right. know, something. Regear it, regear it. Bigger tires. Yeah, the Tuck upper control it. arms yeah. to support those bigger tires. Yeah, so it's it's, it's just it's a lot money. of work, and then it's, you gotta you gotta be breaking stuff. You're gonna be constantly breaking stuff, and um, I have a lot of friends that used to do that kind of driving, but then after you break so many things, you're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna chill. Yeah, I'm gonna chill. It's, it's, it all depends on what what your goal is. For me, it's. I have three kids, my wife, so I have to have a reliable tra transportation that can get me somewhere and get me back, back home. So, like um, getting back home, as in not break down on the yeah, road because, exactly. like, because your transmission exploded, right? Yeah. And or your, uh, your suspension on both brakes or something. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so there's uh, there's something that I, I just been hearing a lot about lately, and I personally have friends and coworkers that have had this issue with their Ford Chevy 10 speed. So for those that don't know, Ford and Chevy created, they worked together to make a 10 speed transmission to compete with ZF. And um, I just hear of that transmission just, just randomly, just straight up, just failing. Just <laughs> at least it was like around like 2000, 2016 to 2018, I don't know if they resolve the issue. I haven't even looked on the forums or anything like that, but uh, that, I think that's what Jay is getting at is he, he bought a Toyota product for a reason. And that's why I bought, I bought a Honda product for a reason because I wanted something reliable, right? Um, I wasn't, I just want to just let you all know that I wasn't trying to call out like, you know, Subaru and the CBT because even though I was having CBT issues, um, I, I was, it still got me back home. Subaru said it was on its way out and needed to be replaced. So at least like, at least I got home yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't, um, exactly just left stranded. At least I was able to limp back home. I find that difficult trails, difficult four wheel drive trails will break vehicles. CB axles will, CBs will snap, tie rods. Bend, drive shafts get tacoed, and uh, that seems to happen around the level level five difficulty. Uh, trail ratings are always kind of uh, subjective. I find that trailsoffroad.com does the best job at it, but there's always, always anomalies. Would you do level four Gold Mountain? No. <laughs> So level four Gold Mountain, Big Bear, California is notorious for uh, braking vehicles and you know, testing, you know, testing vehicles. I personally am not interested in that, but uh, Trails Off Road considers that a four. And you see where I need to look where I'm going. <laughs> Whoa. Crocs aren't the best uh, shoes for this, but we got a little thing. You are aware. Radio 
check. You want regular bread on yours? Radio check. Radio check. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> so what do I think you should drive? Dude, it's complicated. Drive whatever fits you best. If, long, if you're going long distance, then you might want to consider something that's going to be a bit more fuel efficient, comfortable, and handles on road better. I just wanted to say something at Bernie Falls, that's all, right? <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, give it a good amount of thought because there are going to be some good, okay, and bad choices. So figure out what works best for you. You know, if you're, there's so many people out there, I know there's a, a statistic that 90% of all SUV owners never even take them on a trail and they only see pavement through the life of the vehicle that would be a bad choice right <laughs> would you want to have something that handles on road poorly gets bad fuel economy and you never ever take it on trail that's a crazy statistic but supposedly it's true and um, i mean you could take a very on road oriented vehicle and have lots of trouble on the trails so choose something that best fits you and uh, another thing I, uh, one more thing I think a really important thing I need to, to mention is that car reviewers are gonna say oh yeah this thing wasn't meant for rock crawling yeah but rock crawling is at like you know on a scale of 1 to 10 level 5 my vehicle it's I'm, I'm intending it with the modifications it has to handle most level 4s but there's a lot of vehicles that are only, a lot of all-wheel drive that will only handle up to level two. Even modified, a level two could give them trouble. So, it's uh, definitely a, a slippery slope. There's a lot of, uh, you know, slippery wording used. Um, even a Forerunner not designed for rock crawling, right? You're not gonna rock crawl a, a Forerunner like without modifying it. Um, it's not, you're not going to take, you don't want to take a forerunner on a level 5 trail. That would be considered a difficult four-wheel drive trail. It would get crashed. So, with that said, um, with that said, she's wisely. And uh, anyways, I'm done with this episode. Until next time, have fun on your adventures. Stay tuned for some uh, Overland Expo videos. I plan to feature products and just kind of release a little spotlight video, uh, probably on the daily on a daily basis. You might even see uh, two videos per day. And then uh, once I get home and uh, have my a nice computer to edit on, then I'll be um, releasing the Colorado episode. There's gonna be a lot of. So he's got no brakes at all. I would, I would move because we're like right. They're gonna try and um, essentially just like uh, break them down. Yeah, yeah. But I would probably just clear ourselves. Oh my off. gosh. Negative energy, I expect it Once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm protective My adrenaline spikes when I'm threatened And if you stay in my way, I'm aggressive Cause when there's no legs, it'll kill when I'm